Hi. Uh, Matthew, did you have any trepidation about playing a legend like Andre the Giant? Because, you know, wrestling fans like me, we take Andre pretty seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what you think of how I'm, uh, you know, I didn't. I think I was so into it right away and so excited about uh, doing it that by the time, you know, like as I, literally as I booked the job, I was already watching videos and watch and, you know, and starting the, the voice pro process of it all. There's no question that there's a, every now and then I will pause and say, God, I hope to God that I'm giving it some justice because that is so important to me. Um, after season one, I did have some really nice feedback, which was important. Number one from Dwayne, um, and, and number two, from some, some people who either knew of Andre or knew of, you know, knew him back in the day. So I'm not going to be perfect. I know it's my interpretation, but yes, there's obviously some trepidation. <laughs> um, it, it can be, you know, there, there, are, there has been a few moments where I said, God, am I even close, you know, um, to this? But I, again, it's my interpretation. I, I, I'm always giving bringing the love and trying to be honest as I can with it and I'm hoping that's kind of getting through I just love the friendship between young Dewey and Andre it's probably my favorite thing about the show and I'm wondering how we will see that continue to develop in season two thank you it's it's obviously it's my favorite part as well and, and something <laughs> that I think you know people were not only shocked that there was that relationship but number two that that, that it was close like that um yes season two you will see some more of big andre imposing sort of his knowledge on little dewey as he moves forward in life uh the stakes are getting higher the things that, that little dewey uh is is uh is worrying about girls things like that you know uh love um andre has some things to say and and kind of uh you know as we go along we see him sort of help uh, help dewey set him straight as far as that goes so i'm looking forward, forward to you guys seeing it at least and we saw last season that your character was fighting to keep her wrestlers on her payroll how will we see her handling her uh employees this season and what kind of uh obstacles will she be facing as a promoter Oh, without, thank you for the question, but without getting, see, I, I couldn't wait to answer your question because I'm so excited about season two because you're going to see more of Leah um, uh, in terms of answering that question. So there's, just wait for season two because it will all be revealed. Um, there's, so there's going to be more of her and her relationship with the so-called um, uh, promoters in the wrestling field. So, and how she copes with, um, trying to maintain her own business so it'll all be revealed in season two and it's more fun and uh, funnier um, a lot of um, un-PC things will be happening uh, but uh, yeah she she gets she gets the business rolling um, and uh, yes it's going to be in season two so there'll be more about that to come Matthew, what kind of insight did Dwayne offer you into his relationship with Andre when he was a kid? You know, it started uh, with the fact that he called him Uncle Andre. Uh, he was literally that sort of character for him. You know, he was someone that was around that period a lot, um, always in and out of Hawaii. So, so at that age, uh, he didn't see the scary Andre. You know, he saw loving Andre was around who he would and I, I've said before you know he used to treat him like a, a jungle gym you know so there was sort of that 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 part of it and Dwayne said right away he said uh, number one the man uh, embodied respect which he learned very early on and number two there was a lot of love that he felt for young people and sort of people his age and he kind of even felt that back then that that Andre was almost like a kid himself and I think I think we can appreciate the fact that someone that large and sort of that uh, scary to a certain degree, uh, the fact that he has that other side of him that is this loving, uh, genuinely caring sort of individual. And so that, that those are the kind of things that, that Dwayne told me right off the bat and sort of what has kind of led me into the character that I portrayed in the last two seasons.
And then TV Megasite, if you'd like to ask your question now. Matthew, you're shorter than the real Andre the Giant. Do they give you lifts for your shoes or just camera <laughs> angles to make you look taller? I'm always rooting for camera angles, but I will say that uh, there were uh, there were, when we first started, especially there were lifts in my in my wrestling boots and also in the boots that I wore, sort of in just everyday dress, which was a pain in the ass. I got to be honest. Um, I, I knew I, I had a whole new appreciation for women and when they wear heels, <laughs> because I was basically wearing heels on set. Um, so, yeah, so there's that. I think, uh, you know, listen, I'm never going to be seven foot, whatever Andre was, but I think even being six, seven, six, eight, you know, I think it's, it, we're able to sort of play with that and, and have that sort of distinction between, uh, you know, the normal size person and, and what Andre was. Anna, what preparation did you, if any, to play the role since it's based on a real person? Um, very little is known about was is known about Leah Navia. So the only preparation I had was help from uh, Dwayne Johnson and his mother Atta. So I asked for um, any um, dialogue or any tapes. Oh, they called it. They don't call them tapes these days. But yeah, you know, anything that could give me some idea of how she spoke. Um, so it was more. Um, information from Atta and Dwayne Johnson um, and um, my own experience as a Samoan woman mother sort of helped the role a bit because very similar in terms of um, how strong and fearless she is I mean um, my own mother and mother-in-law are of the same ilk so um, in terms of that is wasn't so hard but from knowing who Leah was, was just feedback and information. And The Root, if you have another question, if you'd like to go. Uh, Anna, Leah is such a fun, over-the-top character. Did you get notes from the family about how far you could take her? Thank you, that's a great question. But um, <clears throat> no, I didn't get any, um, what do you call it? I didn't get any limitation from the parents as how far, but from um, those that knew Leah, like um, Jeff Chang, the writer, he grew up with uh, knowing who Leah was, and and Brian Gerwitz from um, Seven Bucks, they 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 knew Leah, and they would say to me, she was a hard case woman, you know, she was had a great sense of humor. And, you know, some of us were quite scared of her, but, you know, she was, so it's was, it was all information from people who knew, who are part of the production team, who she was. So, um, so it was just that information. And from, as I said before, Atta and, and Dwayne, of who their mother was. And no, so the, I just went with um, how it was written from my own experience. And then, you know, from the producers and the writers, I was like, well, stop, I never got that. So I think it's more around experience and how the writers wanted it and how the direction. So, and the family said, you know, they didn't give me any, don't go too far because mm. yes, I know from my own experience as a Samoan woman mm. that you don't go too far, you don't go to, you know, other areas. But I must say, she was a very un-PC woman you know, is, is there such a word? She would just let fly. And that was wonderful. That's the wonderful thing about her, that you can just say things that you can wear slapping gloves and slap the wrestlers around. I love that. Um, and how she, I, so it's how, how she was and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you. And I love the relationship between Leah and um, Atta. She's kind of, overbearing um, but also very loving and supportive what kind of relationship uh or at least um what kind of dialogue did they tell you about the relationship that the two of them shared well there'll be more of that in season two there'll be a lot 
a lot of revelation around that relationship between Atta and um, and Leah um, in terms of passing on the business. And uh, so there are some twists and turns. Um, but in terms of um, dialogue around the relationship, again, it's about experience between mother and daughter, um, being a mother and a daughter of a similar age. Um, so I guess it's the same with um, how I answered um, Stephanie's question. There's a lot of um, feedback from the writers, um, from the production team who knew the relationship between these two. So there's a lot of direction, a lot of advice and feedback, but it's also from personal experience. And it's also between Stacey and I, like, mm, I don't feel comfortable about that. Can we change? So there was also some, um, some vehicle for both Stacey and I to, to ask the writers if we could change a little bit so that it made it a bit more comfortable and a bit more real. So there was a lot of... Um, uh, talking behind the scenes before before we um, filmed it. So, and I guess that's what came across, which is really, really good to hear that we, it, it is portrayed that way. And 